Hi and welcome. This is Dana Loren Childs with D. Loren Fine Arts and I am going to take you on a little bit of a plenar painting topal sketch journey that I had recently uh, in a beautiful local uh, area that's just blooming with nature and amazing views. Okay, so you see me in all my glory. You can tell I dress up and put on like the put on the dog to go out and paint in nature. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to know what I did behind that tree a few minutes ago. Anyhow, <laughs> I digress. So, when you're doing a painting out in nature, you're not trying in any way, shape, or form to have a final work. What you're doing is creating a topal sketch. It's they're called topography sketches. You're mostly, you know, artists who go out in nature, the first thing they do is they grab a pencil and sketch. Um, a lot of watercolor artists, we sketch with our, this is where I keep my Kleenex, <laughs> when I'm hiking and also when I'm painting. Um, but a lot of watercolor artists will sketch with their paintbrushes. And so this is, this is their new pencil. And because they're doing that, they're, um, not worried about overthinking it. They're not worried about too much detail. When I get my pencil involved, I get a little bit more detail, and that's okay too. It just depends on what your objective is. But a quick topal sketch, you can you can sketch it, uh, or you can just start painting right away. Especially if you only have like in this one, I have three grounds. I've got the foreground. Well, I mean, all landscapes have three grounds, but I've got the foreground that's very simple with rocks and trees, um, and the trees then fade into the middle ground, the rocks, uh, the top of the rock monolith, and then the sky. And that's extremely simple. So I don't feel like, I feel like if I drew it with pencil, I'd be confined a little bit, but when I start playing with my paintbrush, then I can interpret it and it can become a little bit more um, intuitive. And so I like to do that too, but there are times when, like when I was, you know, if I, I have another one that I'll be showing you where I am painting this river and there's so many boulders that if I didn't sketch it, it would be sketchy. <laughs> you see what I did there? Yeah. I'm laughing at my own jokes again. My kids would be ashamed. Um, but anyhow, so, Topal sketches are essentially made for uh, taking back to the studio and finishing. Um, but it's 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 amazing because it captures the feeling when you paint quickly and you paint out in nature. You don't realize it at the time, but it generally captures the feeling of that place because paints will do that, whereas a photograph won't necessarily do that. So I challenge you when you're out in nature, take a photograph of what it is you're painting, and then when you're finished with the whole process, which means you go home and you repaint it um, with more detail, but paint it with expression, paint it with your intuition. Try to think back to how that made you feel, which your top, your topal sketch will help get you there. Um, one of the best paintings I've ever done in my life was done in Yosemite on a log. I know my students have heard me tell this story a million times. On a log in the middle of Merced River and I'm sitting there literally planted in the middle of the river painting and I look down and I'm so at one with nature that, and like right now I'm being rained on and I don't care. Um, well, it's kind of stopped sprinkling, but I was so at one with nature that I'm sitting there painting and I look down and there's a frog sitting right there near the brush, uh, near the crux of where my thumb, thumb and finger come together. And I was just tickled. I let it stay there. It was just really cool. I took a photograph of it um, before it moved on, but it was, it was so cool to just be there in nature, in my element, in my happy place and have uh, nature accept me. You know, um, it's it's moments like those that it just makes you feel like you're a part, you're an extension 
of what's happening on this planet. You're part of this planet. And that's the connection. And when you can get that transferred, that feeling transferred to a piece of paper, and then go home and repaint it with that in mind, um, it's just going to be a whole new, uh, it, it infuses a whole new energy is probably the best way to put it. It infuses a whole new energy into your work and makes it that much more exciting. So um, I would say be careful. Definitely uh, just be cautious when you go out. Uh, you can get lost in painting. And so if I were sitting in the middle of the river right here on a rock uh, or something like that, I would just really want to be careful. Um, I don't advocate that. <laughs> I don't have enough insurance to advocate that online. But uh, just be careful wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, to be mindful of, okay, this is where I'm set up. But if I get distracted or I get too involved in my painting, is there any way that I could be in harm's way or cause harm to somebody else? So just keep that in mind. Um, I know we all have common sense, so we're going to use it. Uh, but sometimes we painters get distracted. I mean, you guys don't know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> okay, happy painting and happy hiking and happy everything. I'm just, I'm so thrilled to be here. I'm gonna stop recording and be quiet as long as I'm able to. And just enjoy being present right here, right now, in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. Again, I'll give you one last look. Your supply list for plein air painting is very similar to your normal supply list. However, you want it miniaturized. And you also want to make sure that you're not taking the type of equipment that if you lost it, it would be difficult to replace. So keep in mind, you can bring all these things with you, but make sure that they're not costing you uh, that much, just in the event that a brush goes downstream or falls out of your backpack, hiking up the back of Half Dome, and so forth and so on. I'm not speaking from personal experience at all. <laughs> Anyhow, happy painting, and I hope that you take a moment to subscribe. And please, please leave your requests in my comments. Tell me what kinds of lessons you want to learn. Uh, and stay in touch through my website at www.dlaren.net.